We're in an office overlooking Shenzhen. It's got a beautiful view. We're here with Dimitri, who just recently kickstarted the Smart Duino. You said you've been here for seven years. Yeah. What are the advantages of living here in Shenzhen? Well, I, I can tell you, uh, I can show you this. Uh, this product, uh, I had the idea. I mean, I had the idea before, but uh, I made clear the idea how it should uh, be uh, one morning on Monday morning, okay, uh, before come to the office. I came to the office on Monday morning and I started to design this with Eagle. Uh, on Thursday afternoon, so less than four days later, this was in my hand working. This is the advantage. I think nowhere in the world you can in four days start from the idea to have the finished product working in your hand. I mean, here is a place that uh, uh, if now we want to try any product, any, I see we need a sample of something, we just ask one of the girls in the other room to go downstairs to contact some supplier, they find the best price, they go downstairs uh, somewhere here and they pick the, the sample and we start to use it. Uh, or uh, if we need uh, the, the mask to apply the, the paste for uh, SMT, we just send the file to one of our supplier six in the afternoon. The day after nine in the morning, we have here uh, a delivery guy with the with the material in the hand, or forty eight hour to have the the prototypes of PCBs. All these kind of things is something that uh, nowhere in the world can happen. Yeah. Do you have a favorite building in the market? You know, uh, when I came here. Uh, and it was the new year of uh, the first days of the 2006 uh, because I was living in Shanghai before. Um, I came here, I start to look at the market and uh, um, try to buy some good to send abroad uh, to do some trading like this. And I realized that uh, the only way to get real the best price and the respect of the seller, it was to be one of them. So just two weeks later, I ran my first shop in the market. And uh, in these years, I, I did run uh, at least eight different shops in eight different markets in Watch and Bay, from the MP3 player of 2006 to security cameras, uh, spare parts for, uh, for cell phones and so on. Uh, I don't have a favorite, mar a favorite building. Uh, everyone have a story for me, but uh, I can tell you that uh, you probably visit the the building is named Zondian. It's the one of, of the MP3, MP3 players uh, and this kind of things. When I came here, the first shop uh, I opened it was in the third floor of that building, and it, it was the top floor. Okay, the third was the top floor. Now that building have ten floors, and they are building a new one beside, and they own another three around. Uh, in the six years, I think this market has become, uh, let's say, about a hundred times bigger. Wow. Really. That's and incredible. It's, uh, it's incredible. When I came here uh, uh, six years ago, if you guys uh, come here and work in the market and try to talk to some seller in English, no way to find one single person that uh, can say one word, nothing. Now it's it's really become an international market. Maybe if you go on the back side uh, where only electronic components uh, and they still only speak Chinese because uh, very few people go uh, so far. Uh, most of the tourists just stay on the, on the main road. But here on the main road now it's really easy to find people that speak English. Uh, and the, the problem is that this is rising the prices. <laughs> So it's uh, it's very hard compared to before. Now we move we move on uh, online, maybe eighty percent of our work. Up to one two years ago, uh, most of the parts we source, most most of the products uh, we we source, the prices we get uh, and the suppliers uh, we used to get uh, down in the market. Uh, now we we move online most because uh, the market has become already too expensive. Yeah. It's, it's become too much a place for tourists. But this is uh, another cool thing of Shenzhen. There are, of course, only in Chinese and only for Chinese websites, 
when if you need an IC, uh, I don't know, I need a WizNet uh, 5100 for the network card, uh, my girls don't do anything else than go on the website and publish, okay, we need 1000 on this. And the, the sellers are calling you to make the offer. So you don't need to search, they are searching for you. And this is the the new way to do, let's say, business in Watch and Bay is, uh, is moving in this direction. The market is becoming more like a retail place, a uh, retail very huge shopping uh, mall, and uh, the, the business market uh, is moving online. Yeah, this is uh, just where we do the prototypes, you know, so the stance is for the SMD, and uh, we have the working oven the for the reflow. Um, some tools like uh, to, to, to do some check. This is a very cool uh, tester for the batteries. It's one of the best you can find uh, around in the market. And um, we use because uh, in Europe we import uh, many batteries for cell phones. So we do the test here before uh, send. Mm -hmm. And uh, this kind of thing, some of the parts that we use for the prototypes. We don't have anything related to the production here because uh, uh, when we do the production, we just send directly yeah. the parts to the... So it's cheap supply. enough to get the, the stencils that you actually do your prototypes yeah. with a stencil and then run it through an oven sure. instead of hand soldering it. Of course. Really? It's much cheaper. Okay. It's really and much it's faster. cheaper. It's faster because uh, I get the stencil in one night. Yeah. So if I send now tomorrow, I if I send now the file tomorrow morning, I get it. Um, use the stencils is very easy. I mean, I have the habit, so for me <laughs> at least uh, it's easy. Uh, we have everything here. The only annoying thing is uh, to uh, position the parts, of course. But anyway, if you want to do the end soldering, you need to position mm -hmm. anyway. Uh, the reflow oven take uh, six to seven minutes uh, to finish one board. And uh, we can we can cook, uh, let's say, at least uh, with this small oven that is the let's say the, the cheapest on the market. We can cook three of this board. That means uh, nine Arduino. You can actually fit uh, like nine Arduino in this airflow uh, oven. It's already more than enough yeah. for our uh, needs of prototyping. And. Uh, that's it. When we need to do soldering anyway, we have the, the stuff. It's just uh, this kind of thing. Then, uh, because we don't have much space, so we need to hide the, the tools. So when we need to do some, uh, some work on the, on the boards, we take out uh, the, the tools and <laughs> we work. It's the space is not very big. No. Okay, this is an experiment with the... Uh, a kind of 100 watt of uh, LED uh, that we used to test uh, for the load. This kind of things. It's yeah, we good. only have two rooms. Uh, I mean, the the small lab that is also the office for the girls, and uh, my room that is also uh, stock room and uh, a dirty table and everything. Ah. Is uh, here in China we are uh, we are small. <laughs> we are bigger in Italy, but. Uh, it's too cold there for me. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about the goal of your project? When we started to think about this project, uh, it was uh, almost one year ago, and we were in Italy. Uh, my company in Italy is the is one of the original manufacturer of Arduino. Uh, I come from the same village where Arduino was born and is uh, made uh, today. Um, we just had this idea to get uh, an Arduino and separate uh, uh, in two parts, the, the board on one side and the, um, the core, the CPU on the other side. So you can uh, uh, make all your project, you can proto prototype, you can uh, breadboard uh, anything you want. When you are ready and you have uh, the software loaded, you can just remove it and apply in some product or anywhere you want. You know, you, if you don't need any more, uh, this big space, uh, all the connection and so on. And uh, it came out this idea of the smart bus open IO that is actually what we propose a sol solution uh, to let different uh, products uh, to to talk each other. And then we we started with this and we started to say, okay, let's try to add uh, one uh, uh, extension of the con of the um, bus that can be 
on one side and then another con extension that can move uh, uh, in another direction and we keep adding 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 uh, reach about uh, 50 different boards uh, then we just choose to stop uh, and uh, we launched the, the product on uh, Kickstarter it went very good we didn't expect this kind of success and uh, cooperation with uh, other projects uh, and so on that's it the basic idea it was just to make an Arduino that uh, can become uh, when finished the prototype can become a finished product very easy very small maybe you can plug it on a breakout and just uh, plug the signal you need our idea it was uh, after you do the prototype with Arduino uh, you have only two kind of solution use Arduino and go ahead with the kind of big board uh, so implement a product with at least this size or on the other way uh, design your own PCB and this cost a lot of money uh, this solution should be the good one for product that have a run of maybe let's say 50 to 100 piece or less uh, it's cheap enough to to make a finished product and you don't need to invest the money to make your custom board uh, that is was the original idea that become uh, this so basically the concept is we designed the smart bus with uh, based on four connectors uh, the first one is dedicated to the signals to the power and to the communication signals two SPI I squares uh, I square C and uh, the USB, the um, T T X and R X of uh, the the standard word uh, and so on. And we use more than one uh, signal for the power to have more capacity to have a higher rating. So actually, the bus is rated uh, uh, two two ampere for uh, the five volt, uh, one ampere on the three point three, two ampere on the um, input uh, voltage and uh, up to 8 ampere on the ground plus we, we add one connector uh, for the basic signals the 22 IOs of Arduino actually can carry 27 IOs and another two for the additional IOs so altogether uh, we can carry more than 80 uh, general purpose IO and uh, if you use only half only the first part you get the smart bar basic that is this part they can match so if I get uh, um, sorry it's a mess if I get the smart core ham that is actually an Arduino Mega I use the full bus because I have more than 60 IO if I want to use only uh, the equivalent of Arduino Uno I only need the smart bus uh, basic because I only use 22 of the of the signal and starting from here from the from the bus you can extend how much you want I mean this is like uh, some extension of the bus you can plug anything you want you can keep extending you can get the this is the uh, network okay the network card and you can plug uh, on one of the bus uh, this is an uh, USB ADK module you can plug on another side maybe you can uh, you can put a smart core here it's all very flexible so actually and then you can just get uh, one uh, adapter for uh, let's say Arduino I can uh, plug for example here and on this I can stack any shield design for Arduino you can extend as much as you want because any extension carry all the the signal of the bus. Wow, so that's very impressive. Uh, and this is actually our idea of uh, of bus. I mean, uh, now I don't have here the adapters, but uh, the concept is we in this weeks we made adapter for DigiSpark, Tiny Duino, uh, Electric Imp, uh, FreeSock. You just uh, had all or for example if you have I should have an Arduino somewhere here here if you have the Arduino you just plug the adapter and from here you can start with the bus and you it's not I mean it's just one set of connector but actually if I plug here okay 
it extends the Arduino to all the bus. So it keeps controlling its shield, but also control uh, our uh, network shield. And uh, it shares the, the bus with uh, another core. Okay, so can exchange information.